Today we continue with Chapter 13, The Guiltless World. Introduction If you did not feel guilty, you could not attack, for condemnation is the root of attack. It is the judgment of one mind by another as unworthy of love and deserving of punishment. But herein lies the split, for the mind that judges perceives itself as separate from the mind being judged, believing that by punishing another it will escape punishment. All this is but the delusional attempt of the mind to deny itself and escape the penalty of denial. It is not an attempt to relinquish denial, but to hold on to it. For it is guilt that has obscured the Father to you, and it is guilt that has driven you insane. The acceptance of guilt into the mind of God's Son was the beginning of the separation, as is the acceptance of the atonement is its end. The world you see is the delusional system of those made mad by guilt. Look carefully at this world and you will realize that this is so. For this world is the symbol of punishment, and all the laws that seem to govern it are the laws of death. Children are born into it through pain and in pain. Their growth is attended by suffering, and they learn of sorrow and separation and death. Their minds seem to be trapped in their brain, and its powers to decline if their bodies are hurt. They seem to love, yet they desert and are deserted. They appear to lose what they love, perhaps the most insane belief of all, and their bodies wither and gasp and are laid in the ground and are no more. Not one of them but has thought that God is cruel. If this were the real world, God would be cruel, for no father could subject his children to this as the price of salvation and be loving. Love does not kill to save. If it did, attack would be salvation and this is the ego's interpretation, not God's. Only the world of guilt could demand this, for only the guilty could conceive of it. Adam's, quote, sin could have touched no one had he not believed it was the Father who drove him out of paradise. For in that belief the knowledge of the Father was lost, since only those who do not understand him could believe it. This world is a picture of the crucifixion of God's Son. And until you realize that God's Son cannot be crucified, this is the world you will see. Yet you will not realize this until you accept the eternal fact that God's Son is not guilty. He deserves only love because He has given only love. He cannot be condemned because He has never condemned. The atonement is the final lesson he need learn, for it teaches him that, never having sinned, he has no need of salvation. Guiltlessness and Invulnerability Earlier I said that the Holy Spirit shares the goal of all good teachers, whose ultimate aim is to make themselves unnecessary by teaching their pupils all they know. The Holy Spirit wants only this, for sharing the Father's love for His Son, He seeks to remove all guilt from His mind, that He may remember His Father in peace. Peace and guilt are antithetical and the Father can be remembered only in peace. Love and guilt cannot coexist, and to accept one is to deny the other. Guilt hides Christ from your sight, for it is the denial of the blamelessness of God's Son. In the strange world that you have made, the Son of God has sinned. How could you see Him then? By making Him invisible, 
the world of retribution arose in the black cloud of guilt that you accepted, and you hold it dear. For the blamelessness of God Christ is the proof that the ego never was, and never can be. Without guilt, the ego has no life, and God's Son is without guilt. As you look upon yourself and judge what you do honestly, you may be tempted to wonder how you can be guiltless. Yet consider this, you are not guiltless in time, but in eternity. You have, quote, sinned in the past, but there is no past. Always has no direction. Time seems to go in one direction, but when you reach its end, it will roll up like a long carpet spread along the past behind you, and will disappear. As long as you believe the Son of God is guilty, you will walk along this carpet, believing that it leads to death. And the journey will seem long and cruel and senseless, for so it is. The journey the Son of God has set himself is useless indeed, but the journey on which his Father sets him is one of release and joy. The Father is not cruel and his son cannot hurt himself. The retaliation that he fears and that he sees will never touch him, for although he believes in it, the Holy Spirit knows it is not true. The Holy Spirit stands at the end of time where you must be, because he is with you. He has already undone everything unworthy of the Son of God, for such was his mission given him by God. And what God gives has always been. You will see me as you learn the Son of God is guiltless. He has always sought his guiltlessness, and he has found it. For everyone is seeking to escape from the prison he has made, and the way to find release is not denied him. Being in him, he has found it. When he finds it, is only a matter of time, and time is but an illusion. For the Son of God is guiltless now, and the brightness of His purity shines untouched forever in God's mind. God's Son will always be as He was created. Deny your world and judge Him not, for His eternal guiltlessness is in the mind of His Father and protects Him forever. When you have accepted the atonement for yourself, you will realize there is no guilt in God's Son. And only as you look upon Him as guiltless can you understand His oneness. For the idea of guilt brings a belief in condemnation of one by another, projecting separation in place of unity. You can condemn only yourself, and by so doing you cannot know you are God's Son. You have denied the condition of his being, which is his perfect blamelessness. Out of love he was created, and in love he abides. Goodness and mercy have always followed him, for he has always extended the love of his Father. As you perceive the holy companions who travel with you, you will realize that there is no journey, but only an awakening. The Son of God, who sleepeth not, has kept faith with his Father for you. There is no road to travel on, and no time to travel through. For God waits not for his Son in time, being forever unwilling to be without him. And so it has always been. Let the holiness of God's Son shine away the cloud of guilt that darkens your mind. And by accepting his purity as yours, Learn of him that it is yours. You are invulnerable because you are guiltless. You can hold on to the past only through guilt. For guilt establishes that you will be punished for what you have done, and thus depends on one-dimensional time proceeding from past to future. No one who believes this can understand what always means 
and therefore guilt must deprive you of the appreciation of eternity. You are immortal because you are eternal and always must be now. Guilt then is a way of holding past and future in your mind to ensure the ego's continuity. For if what has been will be punished, the ego's continuity is guaranteed. Yet the guarantee of your continuity is God's, not the ego's. And immortality is the opposite of time. For time passes away while immortality is constant. Accepting the atonement teaches you what immortality is. For by accepting your guiltlessness, you learn that the past has never been, and so the future is needless and will not be. The future, in time, is always associated with expiation, and only guilt could induce a sense of a need for expiation. Accepting the guiltlessness of God's Son as yours is therefore God's way of reminding you of His Son and what He is in truth. For God has never condemned His Son, and being guiltless, He is eternal. You cannot dispel guilt by making it real and then atoning for it. This is the ego's plan, which it offers instead of dispelling it. The ego believes in atonement through attack, being fully committed to the insane notion that attack is salvation. And you who cherish guilt must also believe it, or how else but identifying with the ego could you hold dear what you do not want? The ego teaches you to attack yourself because you are guilty, and this must increase the guilt, for guilt is the result of attack. In the ego's teaching, then, there is no escape from guilt, for attack makes guilt real, and if it is real, there is no way to overcome it. The Holy Spirit dispels it simply through the calm recognition that it has never been. As he looks upon the guiltless Son of God, he knows that this is true. And being true for you, you cannot attack yourself. For without guilt, attack is impossible. You then are saved because God's Son is guiltless. And being wholly pure, you are invulnerable. And from the workbook, Lesson 94, I am as God created me. Today we continue with the one idea which brings complete salvation, the one statement which makes all forms of temptation powerless, the one thought which renders the ego silent and entirely undone. You are as God created you. The sounds of this world are still, the sights of this world disappear, and all the thoughts that this world ever held are wiped away forever by this one idea. Here is salvation accomplished. Here is sanity restored. True light is strength, and strength is sinlessness. If you remain as God created you, you must be strong, and light must be in you. He who ensured your sinlessness must be the guarantee of strength and light as well. You are as God created you. Darkness cannot obscure the glory of God's Son. You stand in light, strong in the sinlessness in which you were created, and in which you will remain throughout eternity. Today we will again devote the first five minutes of each waking hour to the attempt to feel the truth in you. Begin these times of searching with these words. I am as God created me. I am His Son eternally. Now, try to reach the Son of God in you. 
This is the self that never sinned, nor made an image to replace reality. This is the self that never left its home in God to walk the world uncertainly. This is the self that knows no fear, nor could conceive of loss or suffering or death. Nothing is required of you to reach this goal except to lay all idols and self-images aside. Go past the list of attributes, both good and bad, you have ascribed to yourself and wait in silent expectancy for the truth. God has himself promised that it will be revealed to all who ask for it. You are asking now. You cannot fail because he cannot fail. If you do not meet the requirement of practicing for the first five minutes of every hour, at least remind yourself hourly, I am as God created me. I am his son eternally. Tell yourself frequently today that you are as God created you, and be sure to respond to anyone who seems to irritate you with these words. You are as God created you. You are his son eternally. Make every effort to do the hourly exercises today. Each one you do will be a giant stride toward your release and a milestone in learning the thought system which this course sets forth. I am as God created me. I am guiltless. I am invulnerable. Today, I make my personality self unnecessary by teaching with my mind all that I know, all that is true. I am as God created me. Our Heavenly Father can be remembered only in peace. Today I remember, love and guilt cannot coexist, and to accept one is to deny the other. There is one thing that must be ultimately learned, that guilt is always totally insane and has no reason. Christ is the proof that the ego never was, and never can be. Today I realize I am guiltless in eternity. The past is gone, it can touch me not. The journey to God is but the reawakening of where you are always and what you are forever. Today I accept the love that I am and that extends from me eternally. Today I accept my identity in God as Spirit. Jesus reminds us, when you have accepted the atonement for yourself, you will realize there is no guilt in God's Son. And only as you look upon him as guiltless can you understand his oneness. Out of love he was created, and in love he abides. Goodness and mercy have always followed him, for he has always extended the love of his Father. I shall dwell in the mind of God forever and ever. 
as you perceive the holy companions who travel with you, you will realize that there is no journey, but only an awakening. Today I accept this awakening. Today I accept this innocence. I accept immortality. Open the gate that atonement offers. There is but one idea we practice with today. I am as God created me. I am his son eternally. As I look upon my brothers and sisters today, quietly, I say to myself within, you are as God created you. You are his son eternally. I am as God created me. Amen.